G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be having a look at Virtual Manager. I've swapped from VirtualBox to Virtual Manager and it hasn't been a good start. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you the reason why. Let's first have a look at Vert Manager, which I've moved over to, if I can manage to open it. Now this is Vert Manager here. As you can see, I've got two machines here, one running Debian 10, which is running Debian testing. And I was kind of hoping that uh, I could get GNOME 40 desktop on Debian testing, but hasn't come around yet. I don't know if Debian SID gets it quicker or Debian testing. I'm not really sure. I would have thought testing did. However, I've downloaded the GNOME 40, so you can look forward to a video on that very soon. But this was my dilemma, and I'll show you what's happening. Let's go to my pictures folder. Let's have a quick look at that. VBox machines deleted, so here we go. So all these machines here. And then the next one, all these machines here. And then you'll probably see one extra down the bottom there compared to the previous photo. All those were deleted. <laughs> and I will show you why. So if we have a look down here, Let's have a quick look down here. There I have my dock with an external drive in it. It's a one terabyte. And I run all my VMs from that. That's what I do. Um, so in VirtualBox, I was running all VMs in that machine there on that, on that uh, external hard drive. And it's an internal hard drive into, um, plugged into a dock and run externally. So that's how I've been running my virtual machines. So come time to set this thing up here, Virtual M Machine Manager. All I wanted to do is, um, all, well, all I did on there was I pointed, let's have a quick look at that machine there. There's my VirtualBox VMs, all deleted, gone. I've actually, um, what I've done with this, hard drive here is I uh, reformatted it and just wiped the whole thing clean because that's what I did with installing one operating system because I pointed it um, by accident to the whole disk rather than to the folder because I couldn't get the folder to work didn't know why that was so all I wanted to do was run vert manager keep all my virtual box machines there in case I wanted to access them and just run them side by side using the same um, external hard drive. So I was going to keep all my existing virtual box machines and continue on with Virt Manager. Not the case. I've deleted them all um, accidentally and these are the things we do in Linux. <laughs> so I've started from scratch um, and I've got these two machines here. Now, as you know, I'm um, a big fan of doing videos of dual booting Windows and Linux and mostly with Ubuntu and according to some of my favorite viewers I'm a madman <laughs> and probably right I'm a bit of a madman um, I used to be a filthy dual booter and unfortunately there's some people in the world who only have laptops and they're not as fortunate as everyone else and they probably can't even afford an external hard drive because they live in um, not so fortunate countries. So they only got one hard drive on a laptop and if they wanted to run Linux and get away from Windows because they probably, they probably don't even have the money to afford Windows to start with, um, then um, dual booting helps those people out. And that's why I do it, to help the less fortunate. Um, I'm just going to um, in start an install here. I'll use Ubuntu 20.04.2 just to do that. It doesn't find the name for that, so we'll just type generic and forward and make that eight gigs and two cores, two CPUs. 20 gig will do and forward. And then at this point, we can click customize configuration before install, click finish. And then I've got all these options here. Now, this I'm well aware of all this information thanks to this man here, Dorian Dotslash. 
He makes some very good videos and I like watching his videos. And he had this video here, Q, Q -EMU or QEMU plus KVM and Vert Manager. So you need those two to run it with the, with the Vert Manager. I think they're like a dependency or something, QEMU and KVM. I think they're dependencies or they are needed to run Vert Manager, that's for sure. So thanks, Dorian, for that. Um, you inspired me to um, change over to Vert Manager. And it hasn't been a great start due to my own lack of knowledge. And I just could not, for some reason, point to the um, that Vert Manager folder. Now, I believe that if I wanted to dual boot on a system, then I would probably have to set it up here before I, before I install, because I think... I'm not 100% sure, but I think you cannot open this once it's installed. I cannot see any options to open all these things up once it's installed. So I'd probably have to select CD-ROM, put it up the top, enable boot menu. I think that would be right. I haven't tried this yet, um, but I'm certainly going to try in the near future. I'm going to mess around with this, play around with a few operating systems, probably just use Ubuntu or something, just mess around with install. So I'll cancel that. Yes, let's cancel that. So when I was in, when I would be installing this, if I was installing, um, uh, let's do that. So when I was installing, so when I was installing um, some distros when I first started and you go forward and you set these and then you set your CPUs and you go forward. Now this is where I was selecting the custom storage and trying to set the Vert Manager folder and that wasn't working. And then I realized that there's edit connections here and you can go to storage. But they had a default one here which was var lib libvert images. So I believe that's what it was. Let's just double check that. Um, where are we? Computer, var, um, lib, libvert, libvert, and images. And I have to open that up as administrator. Oh. Okay, and then there's the pool. I'm not sure, what, no, there's nothing in the pool. So images would live in this folder here. So that was, def that was the default setting. And then I tried to um, produce my own. So I would call it NUC. And then I would use the file system directory and then browse to the vert manager folder. That's where I was trying to add it and it wasn't working. And I was trying to add it as an extra pool in here. Um, and I had so many issues trying to do that. Let's just cancel that one. But all the while I was doing this, the default var lib libvert images was still there. I was just trying to add my own. Now, I'm unsure whether the uh, permissions in this external hard drive were correct or not, but I did change them at some point and I changed the permissions because I don't think it had uh, read and write access to it. So that might have been another problem I was having. Um, so I did that. And then I deleted the default var lib libvert images um, storage default from the pool here. And then I added this one. And then it worked. Now, I don't, th I don't know if there was anything else I did specifically. I cannot remember. And if you want to delete the default one, then you've got to click stop. And then this one here, delete the pool which is what I did. And then you click the plus button and you add your own, which is what I did. From memory, I think that's what I did. I'm not 100% sure uh, because I was getting frustrated and I was definitely getting very frustrated after I deleted all my VMs from my hard drive there. So I've started from scratch. I've formatted that hard drive now and starting from fresh. And as you'll see, in virtual machines, it's just this Windows 7, which I already had a backup of. I've had that Windows 7 backup for a very, very long time. I just shove it into VirtualBox and it works. 
So I didn't back up any of my other VMs, although Windows 10 is fairly easy to create these days. So Invert Manager, there's those two there. I actually renamed this one because that was, I forgot to name it when I installed it, and that's the GNOME OS 40. So I downloaded the GNOME OS. So I'm going to be having a look at that. So with GNOME OS, I found some information online um, that when you, I will just use that as an example, that one there. When installing GNOME OS, I went to the customized configuration before install, and I found online that uh, was, uh, where was it? Oh yeah, it's in overview, the chipset. I had to change the chipset. Now I don't know, <clears throat> I think they're the defaults. I can't write. I'd have to think that that opens up with the defaults. I think I changed it to. I can't remember what I changed it to now, to be honest. Uh, let's see if we can. I think it was these two I changed. Only these two, I believe. And otherwise, it wouldn't. That GNOME OS ISO would not boot until, I, uh, until somebody said change those. Um, and if we can have a look at connection details, I don't know if it'll tell us or not. Virtual machine details. Oh, there we go there. So I can view them in there. Oh, can I change those? I don't know if I can change those. How did I do that again? <laughs> How did I do that? Um, details, so I click details. Console, okay, so you go from console to details. I've just discovered something new making this video, to be honest, I didn't know you could do that. So in, let's have a look at the, this is the GNOME OS one, isn't it? Yep. So overview, i440, I changed the firmware to this one here. Now that could have been that uh, 35 or something there, I think. So you can't change these things. You can only look at it. Don't know if you can change the CD-ROM or not. Yeah, I have to have a look at that. I'm not sure if I actually changed. I think I changed that from the 35 to the 440, and it looks like it stayed the same whenever you do another uh, distro. I'm not quite sure about that. I hope Dorian's watching this video. He might be able to um, inform me a little bit more of, um, about that. Um, I'm just finding that a little bit confusing right now. I don't know why I have to change that and whether it's remain default or not is another question. So that's been my first little journey into Vert Manager and it's been a bit of a rough start, but that can be the case with using any new software. It doesn't matter whether you're in Linux, Windows, Mac, it doesn't matter where you are. If you're using new software, um, it's, it's a learning curve, that's for sure. But the positive out of this is I've got it going. I'm using my external hard drive. I'm happy with that because uh, that's a one gig. So I don't have to use up any of my space on my NVMEs, which I really don't like doing. So if I go to disk usage analyzer and I've got my Pop! OS here on a 250 gig NVMe and my volume here is 410 gig available. That's why I don't want, because I've got a lot of stuff on there. I've got all that backed up on different hard drives. So I don't want to use up any more space on that, except for what I'm doing on my main system, creating videos and things like that. So that's why I want the VM on a separate hard drive. Yeah, so that's been my Vert Manager um, introduction. <laughs> Um, bit of a frustrating one at some point, uh, but also um, I'm pretty happy with the way it works. So I can see how people say if you change over to this, you'll probably never go back to VirtualBox. So I've already found just um, starting up a VM once it's all working and installing a VM, getting your full screen, everything just seems to work seamlessly. So I'm pretty, I'm very happy and impressed with that. So that's um, a good thing. So there's the positives on this and I've just got to work out if I want to do a dual boot video I just got to work out how to do that. So I'll be 
messing around with Vert Manager a little bit more. So if I go missing for a while, you know what I'm up to. <laughs> I'll be messing with Vert Manager. Yeah, so that's what I've been up to in changing um, my virtual machine habits. So hopefully it all works out for the best. Uh, looking forward to probably making some more videos within Vert Manager and see how that goes. So thanks for joining me in this video, the Vert Manager rabbit hole. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video.